Hi everybody, welcome to Simply Scuba here with another video answering questions from the interweb. Uh, today I'm answering questions about another diving brand. This week it's Fourth Element. Uh, so one of my favourite brands uh, who have a keen focus on being as environmentally friendly as possible as well as making some awesome exposure protection, so wetsuits and dry suits and so on. So let's answer some questions about Fourth Element. Is Fourth Element a good brand? Yep, yeah, um, they've always been a top tier brand in my eyes uh, and their wetsuits, their dry suit undersuits have always been widely considered among if not the best out there to keep you warm um, in equipment that is specifically designed for scuba divers. It's not just, oh this is a nice warm something or other that you can designed to go hiking and then oh yeah I suppose you can also use it scuba diving if you wanted to it's specifically made for scuba divers fourth element equipment is just used all over the world by a lot of professional um, divers so um, from like police and military divers uh, who need just the best and most efficient stuff to get them in the water and keep them nice and warm as far as being a, a good company. Fourth Element have a, a dedicated range of equipment called Ocean Positive uh, that is made using uh, recycled ghost gear, so old fishing nets and lines and things that's literally pulled from the oceans by scuba divers. They then clean it up and then spin it into yarn and then Fourth Element make uh, sort of rash vests and stuff out of it. They've always strive to eliminate plastic packaging from all of their items and most of them today come in either just cardboard boxes, biodegradable bags or with no packaging at all like their fins. So as far as being a, a good responsible company for the future, yes, Fourth Element is a good brand and to keep you warm on your adventures, yes, they're, they're very much a good brand. Where is Fourth Element from? Fourth Element started in a bar in Sharm El Sheikh when two great guys uh, decided that there was a bit of a gap in the market and by combining their individual backgrounds they could design and manufacture premium dive gear for the modern diver. They created Fourth Element in 1999 uh, here in the UK and right now their headquarters are in Cornwall on the southwest coast. Uh, they also have a dealer network on pretty much every continent uh, around the world from Hawaii and mainland United States to Europe, Asia as well as Australia and uh, New Zealand but their headquarters is right here in the UK. Is thermocline neutrally buoyant? Yes, fourth element thermocline is a like a neoprene wetsuit alternative um, that is neutrally buoyant so you don't need to add any extra lead like a normal wetsuit. Thermocline is basically a, a thermal rash vest. Uh, you can wear it alone uh, to add a bit of insulation when you're in the water or, or especially when you're on the surface or you can actually wear it underneath your wetsuits to kind of boost the insulation especially over your core. But because thermocline is a multi-layer fabric there's there's nothing in there that floats so you don't need to load up your weight belt as you would if you were adding like a neoprene shorty that's really the one of the biggest selling points for thermocline most people say it's like equivalent to around two millimeter thick of neoprene which I'd kind of agree to it's, it's good to take the edge off if you're on like a longer dive and you start to get a little bit of a chill it does help take that edge off and it is great if you're doing stuff on the surface like stand up pedal boarding and all that kind of stuff because if you get splashed it still keeps you nice and warm uh, but yes thermocline is a neutrally buoyant alternative to neoprene. Are scuba wetsuits different? Yes, scuba wetsuits often have unique features specifically for scuba diving and more importantly they're often made with a different type of neoprene. Not all neoprene is the same and there are lots of different blends for different uses and for scuba diving we need it to be compression resistant so that it doesn't squeeze all of the insulation out when we're down at the deepest part of our dive where the pressure is the greatest and it's actually the coldest. As divers our neoprene used to be quite stiff so that we could stay nice and warm at depth but it restricted your movement a bit but nowadays a lot of modern neoprene blends are both flexible and compression resistant so we have the best of both worlds 
On from that, scuba diving wetsuits tend to have shoulder reinforcements uh, so that RBCD straps don't rub too much and just wear out your, uh, your wetsuit. Um, thigh pockets in some cases for storage is always useful. Uh, you don't tend to see too many surfing wetsuits with thigh pockets on them. Surfers don't really need to carry stuff with them, unlike scuba divers. And things like detailing on the wrist to hold your dive computer in place, attachment points on your hip for your hood when you're not using it. Scuba wetsuits, yes, they are a little bit different to other wetsuits out there, uh, especially the ones that are designed for surface water sports. How tight should a dry suit be? This one's tricky. Uh, sizing suits is very personal and, uh, and there's no like blanket answer. And it's always been between not so tight that you can't move properly and you of course can fit your, it needs to be big enough so that you can fit your thickest undersuit inside it. Um, but not so large that air can get trapped in like the excess materials and you then can't end up venting it. A, a lot of space inside of your dry suit is nice because you can move around, you've got plenty of maneuverability, but in membrane suits especially, it can start to pinch as the excess material folds and then pinches your skin, which can be uncomfortable. So a dry suit should feel, it should feel fairly snug. Um, as you dive, the water is actually gonna squeeze a lot of the air space out of it anyway. Um, so it feels much more snug until you press that button on your chest. A telescopic dry suit will help provide plenty of flexibility because as you need to stretch, you have just excess material along your torso. So do look for telescopic dry suits. And another option is something like Aqualung Fusion dry suits, which are basically made one or two sizes too big, but they actually have a second external suit outside of that one that's keeping you dry that tucks in any excess material so you actually do have the best of both worlds you have you're basically wearing a suit that's one or two sizes too big so you have plenty of flexibility but in the water you don't have any of that excess material it's all tucked in and held nice and hydrodynamic if you have any questions that you want answered, then by all means, let me know down in the comments below. And of course, let everybody know what you think about fourth elements down in the comments below. Then head over to simplyscuba.com for all of your scuba diving needs. Thank you for watching everybody. And of course, safe diving.